Now we're going to continue with our next speakers. I have the pleasure of introducing Mark Stone and Carrie Howe from the Department of Civil Engineering here at UNM. I'm Carrie Howe, and Mark and I are going to be talking about water and resiliency today. And I think most of the speakers who have talked so far have at least mentioned the word water or had a slide that had water in it. So it's come up over and over again so far today. And I want to point out that, that the, the National Academy of Engineering, the grand challenges for engineering has already been mentioned. And one of the grand challenges for engineering is providing access to clean water. And also the uh, sustainable development goals that have already been mentioned uh, more than once today also has uh, clean water and sanitation as one of the goals. So clearly water is something that's important throughout, uh, throughout the world. Um, uh, Lack of access to clean water is something that can lead to conflict between countries, between peoples, between cultures. Um, you always hear uh, statistics about how many billions of people around the world don't have access to clean water and sanitation, but we don't need to go to developing countries to find that. There are people in 100 miles of this building who don't have access to clean water and sanitation. So Mark and I are gonna to talk today about various programs going on at UNM that have to do with water, sanitation, and resiliency. And the first one is the Center for Water and Environment, which is a research center uh, within the School of Engineering. It's been around for six or seven years now, and it's got a variety of different uh, focus, focus okay, um, that we're working on. So, the first one is watersheds and the idea that we live in, uh, in a region of the country where water is scarce and climate change has been mentioned and, and climate change is leading to changes in the availability of water. And so part of our research is related to where our water comes from in, in Albuquerque and in the desert southwest and frankly in 40% of the world, 40% of the people in the world live in water scarce areas. Mark's going to talk a little bit more about watersheds uh, on his slides. The next area that we have as a research area within the Center for Water and the Environment is treatment technology. So providing that, that clean water to people involves taking water out of the environment and treating it so that it's safe to drink. And that inv involves a, a number of different technologies depending on where you are and what contaminants might be in the water. So some examples of, of research going on within the Center for the Environment would be um, membrane technologies for treating brackish groundwater that, so that it can be used for drinking water. And so for instance, regions of uh, Navajo country uh, don't have access to fresh surface water, but there is brackish groundwater available. So if you had a way to treat that, you could make that more available. Another technology that's available is uh, atmospheric water capture, getting water out of the atmosphere. And then the third area is water and energy. And there are numerous examples of where energy resources are in conflict with water resources. And this is in the, in the production of energy resources and also in the generation of electricity. So an example here is, again, uh, referencing Navajo country, lots of uranium mining has happened in the past that has contaminated the groundwater. And now the water supply is not safe to drink for the people who live there. So the picture there that I have on the slide is some of our students who are working on uh, using biological systems plants to uptake the contamination out of the water to make the water safe to drink. Another initiative within UNM is the grand challenges. So this started a couple of years ago. Our, our president and our administration put out a call for what are the, the big important issues that the UNM ought to be addressing. And sustainable water resources was identified and selected as one of the areas that UNM needs to focus on. The main thing I wanna point out on this slide is that this is really is an interdisciplinary effort. That's already been mentioned today as well. So we've got, uh, just within our leadership team, there are people from nine different departments on campus. So. We've got people in urban planetary sciences who are investigating how our water supply is changing through climate change and drought and things like that. People in biology who are investigating 
how much water the natural uh, environment needs and, and what happens if we don't provide that much water. People in engineering are looking at processes, new materials, people in the law school looking at policy, economics, and social justice, and really all of these people working on training the next generation. Um, engineers and scientists and policymakers who can solve these issues. And I'll turn the, the mic over to Mark. Thank you, Carrie. So I'm gonna talk about two things. I thought about like five different Venn diagrams to show how this all fits together because my world and Carrie's world have a lot of, of overlap, um, including my involvement with Center with water, center, the Center for Water and the Environment. But today I wanna to talk about the Resilience Institute and also a new research effort called the Intermountain West Transformation Effort. The Resilience Institute sits within the School of Engineering, so it is a, a school level uh, center, research center. Um, that said, our footprint is well beyond engineering. We have uh, collaborators across campus and over on the North Campus as well. And really, our reach, as I'll describe, describe to the Intermountain West Transformation Network, is actually much larger than that as well. So, for the UM Resilience Institute, we started about five years ago um, with uh, the real uh, emphasis being really just to produce connectivity to catalyze a lot of great work that was already going on across campus and to provide a forum for people to share ideas and experiences and to advance the work that we're doing in the area of resilience, really broadly speaking. So we have people uh, is, uh, working on resilience issues, going anywhere from infrastructure to health. So it was really just to provide a forum to bring it all together. And then I'm gonna talk more about this international West transformation that we're doing with it. So the second time off. So I'm gonna talk about the Resilience Institute first. And yeah, I was gonna click these one at a time, but I think that could be a nightmare. So, um, First, uh, one of the big activities that we sponsor every year, sponsor and organize every year, is known as the um, Resilience Colloquium. It's uh, similar to this setting. We've grown from a small in-house operation about five years ago to now we um, have well over 100 participants in, in this on an annual basis. We just had our last Resilience Colloquium a few weeks ago, so I'm still recovering from that. But each year we take on a, a theme and we invite in renowned speakers and also leave time for a lot of discussion and dialogue um, about key issues. So this year's event was focused on sustainable transformations. Um, I'm going to work clockwise. We also do service activities. Um, the, the picture in the middle right there is um, related to a student-led effort where we built a community center for women in Nepal following the, the earthquakes there in 2016 and 2017. Um, on the bottom right is to highlight a lot of the international work we do. That is part of our collaboration with um, universities in Sonora, Mexico, um, through the 100,000 Strong in the Americas program that's focused on resilience of, of uh, hot desert communities. In the upper left there, we also do a lot of educational programming. So um, that's a, a photograph from the course that we teach in Europe. Uh, each summer, except the last two summers, we're hoping for 2022. Um, that's focused on resilience of European infrastructure to give global students that opportunity to see you know, a really different setting and you know, to think about resilience through a different lens. And we also do a lot of local community related work. Dr. Howe mentioned the uranium issues on Navajo Nation, and that's um, one of the issues that we've been working on as well, working with the community there, known as the Red Water Pond community, um, in order to help them develop solutions that um, will help them move away from contaminated areas. Uh, this is the Intermountain West Transformation Network that I just mentioned. If you haven't heard of this um, yet, even if you're in the area, don't feel too bad. We've been going for a couple of weeks now. This is a, a new initiative. We were just recently granted funding from the National Science Foundation to the tune of uh, five years and $15 million. And this is a broad partnership across eight different universities representing the Intermountain West. Uh, with UNM being the lead of this effort through School of Engineering. And the goal of, of this network is really focused on transformations. And as I'll emphasize on the next slide, it's with a strong emphasis on climate adaptation and resilience and on adjusting um, in these different domains. Um, a strong emphasis on headwaters, which I'm going to expand upon in just a bit. Um, strong emphasis on regional food, energy, and water systems and on uh, innovation, innovations in terms of institutions and, and uh, forms of governance. Um, and then we have these cross-cutting threads that are really meant to tie this all together with a strong emphasis on, in fact, the JEDI reference, justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, and really trying to elevate the voices of parties that have not been represented in decision-making in the past. Um, 
also has a very strong educational component. So just to highlight uh, or to expand a little bit into the research component, this is on the headwaters component, which uh, Carrie mentioned as well. This is a big emphasis of our research group, looking at headwater systems such as the Rio Grande, where the majority of our water um, here in Albuquerque is actually coming from a place not here, right? It's coming from the San Juan Basin and the upper Colorado, upper, upper Rio Grande, which is in Colorado, um, where we depend on that water downstream, both for our, for our economies um, and our ecosystems. And these systems are known to be especially sensitive to climate change. Um, they are warming at a much faster rate than what we are experiencing globally. And when you depend on water that is derived from snowpack and glaciers and other systems, um, that makes these systems specifically uh, uh, highly vulnerable to change. Um, there's several different efforts that all kind of fall under this umbrella, kept including a couple of um, additional NSF grants. Um, and the, the photo to the right, or the map to the right, um, is to highlight one of our large efforts under this area known as our Headwaters of the America initiative, which is part of the Mountain Research um, Initiative based out of Europe, um, but funded by National Science Foundation, where we're looking at these headwater systems in order to build, build capacity and have research exchange, student exchange, and researcher exchange um, with sites that um, expand, extend from the Calgary area all the way down to Patagonia in South America. Um, and, and really looking at this from a very interdisciplinary and integrated fashion to investigate and develop strategies for adaptation and building resilience in new settings. All right, I think that's all that I have. So thank you for that. That's water and resilience in a nutshell.